Well, thank you all so much for being here. Um, thank you, Auto Drive, for uh, hosting. It's very, very nice of you to provide this venue. And uh, this is a pretty short notice so that's really made by the amount of interest we have in Flutter and uh, just mobile in general. Um, I'm Martin. I uh, lead the marketing for Flutter. And uh, I work in Mountain California at our headquarters at Google. And um, Flutter is something I'm very excited about because I really have joined the team over a year ago and I've kind of seen the adoption of it over the last year and how it's really been changing people's lives in terms of how they're developing mobile and also companies in terms of how they're allocating the resources. So uh, today I you know, wasn't really sure um, what mix we have in the audience, uh, so I first was just very curious. Uh, who here has already heard of Flutter? I assume most of you, right? Um, who here has actually already built an app with Flutter? Okay. Oh, 20% of you. All right. Who here is currently working on some sort of Flutter project, whether it's an app, a UI, a code lab? Okay. Great. All right. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to keep it a little bit higher, higher level. Um, just show you first kind of the history of where mobile uh, is headed uh, and how Flutter actually is positioned in that, uh, a little bit of why Flutter is built. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some examples of different companies around the world that are currently building on Flutter. Um, as well as different ways you can get started today with Flutter. So um, first I wanted to start uh, with just the general mobile landscape. Um, and I've given this talk a couple times before, but I think it's really interesting just to look at kind of the trends in mobile as we think about Flutter and other solutions. Um, so you know, something I want to start with was this really interesting statistic, which is that from 2016 to 2022, the global ad economy is going to grow from $1.31 trillion to $6.35 trillion. You know, for me, it's hard to conceptualize numbers like this, so kind of to give you an idea of how much this $1.35 trillion is, that's like saying every human being on the planet has to contribute $835. And part of the reason for this is also that the actual number of apps downloading is going as well. You know, here we are in 2018, we about 205 billion downloads, and by 2022, you can see kind of the growth that's happening in the amount of apps that people are downloading. But something that's really interesting is if we look at the top 1,000 mobile apps with the top 1,000 mobile web properties. So basically the best of the best for both mobile apps and mobile web. And you look at kind of the adoption or, or the behavior that people are spending on these things, and um, in terms of how much minutes they spend per visitor, there's 10x more minutes spent on apps than mobile web. You probably all know this, obviously, you know, mobile. Um, as I walked walk around Paris today, I saw so many signs about download our app or a billboard that was in London before this, and every uh, the tube, just, you know, every other sign is about mobile, right? So, obviously, it's important. Um, so, we as Google actually conducted a study to try and understand what really makes your app successful, what, what, what boosts your app's usage. And as you can see, some of the findings that we got all have a common theme, which is eliminating friction. So making it a lot easier uh, to use the app and also keeping it simple. Um, you know, I used to develop a couple apps and when I, uh, when I was sketching them out, I thought, oh, it's that five tabs at the bottom, you know, two settings pages, and then I'm like, wait a minute, why, why make it so complex? It's a lot harder for users. Uh, and so, you know, making it clean and having it easier to use the apps and things. Also something that's interesting is this one. Consistent experience on multiple devices. If you're familiar with Flutter, you see why, obviously, we're very keen on that uh, specific trend. So, all of this sounds great, right? Um, but I don't think any of you would be here today if there weren't any challenges associated with mobile apps. So, um, you know, I've done this a couple of times, so if, if, you, if you've seen this, uh, I'll let others, but, you know, I want to play a game of roulette to try and visualize a few of the challenges that we face in mobile today. So to do this, can someone please say a number in English? Uh, I'll be trying to in French, but from zero to 36. 13. 13, okay. It's kind of spin, see, see your odds tonight. The number called is 13. Let's see. Oh, it was 17. All right, you didn't get that right. But don't worry, you only have a 3% chance of getting that number right. And in fact, according to AppSpire, only about 3% of new mobile app users will remain active after 30 days. So in other words, if we take a random app from the app store and we have 100 people download it, only an average of three of them will remain active on that app. Now this is super shocking. It's basically playing roulette, right? Um, when you're watching the map, and that's why 
you know, there are many other challenges associated with mobile. So you guys might be familiar with some of these challenges as well. You know, the business challenges are things like time to market. A lot of times you have an idea, but by the time you start working on the app, there's either two apps that already exist with it, or your consumer behavior has changed and you have to start over. Right? You have obviously the agile and be able to hire for whatever app you want to build, or sometimes for two split code bases. Um, also, testing new ideas and prototyping is very important. Being able to quickly test features, even when you launch an app, and being able to iterate on those based on the market. Sometimes you launch in a different country, and it's a whole new set of features required. So what are some of the technical reasons that we're facing today with this? Well, as you know, obviously, you have to build many times for both iOS and Android. And this, obviously, requires two completely separate teams with two completely separate code bases. But let's assume you only want to build for one. Let's assume you just want to build the Android apps, or just want to build the iOS app. You still have issues with the development and the design of the app. A lot of times, you have to design an interface Right, and uh, when I speak to some designers, they say sometimes it's like throwing something over a wall. Right, like you design it, you throw it over a wall, and the developer grabs it and says, "Wait a minute, you know, I can implement some of this, but we have you know these constraints. You can't really like sit together um, and, and work together in real time, which is I think a big problem because it really slows you down. Right, so you know, obviously I mentioned once you launch the app, you want to synchronize and actually release features after on both stores simultaneously. Also, an issue because sometimes one app store takes longer than the other or you have some legal issues in certain countries for certain features. You know, we've seen all, all sorts of things. So this is basically what I just described in one image. It was one of my favorite images, uh, which is called the classic dilemma of mobile app development. So here on the left, you can see what about 80% or so people still do, uh, building two completely separate apps. And as you can see, the quality at the end is the castle. It's really high quality, but together it's a maze. Right? Uh, this maze is a lot of those challenges I described in terms of time and money and effort. So what is the alternative? Well, it's been really these unique third-party cross-platform solutions. Right? So basically a unified code base. And you're probably familiar with things like React Native, PhoneGap, right? Cordova. I remember I used Cordova for a ride-sharing app. You know, um, there were several challenges there. But uh, as you can see, the, uh, it's not a castle, right? It's not the uh, Arc de Trump. Uh, at the end, it's not some, some uh, awesome building. It's really just a hut. And the reason it's a hut is because you're still doing some compromises. So when you're using that kind of single path, this thing right here represents having to convert JavaScript or other web languages to, to native ARM code or other compromises that you're doing along the way that make it not fully native, right? Sometimes you feel that, that this isn't fully native. There's something about this app. So, we wanted to solve this. We said, you know, it can't just be two ways of doing this. And that's why we at Google built Flutter. So Flutter is our uh, SDK to build beautiful native applications on both iOS and Android from one single code base. And I'm going to kind of give you a high level of the four pillars that we use to kind of describe Flutter. And then I'm going to show you a brief demo so you can actually see it in action as well as the talk after me will go a little bit deeper on the tech side. So you can see exactly what, uh, what it's like. <clears throat> Good news is that it's free and open source. It'll always be free and open source. So right after this talk, if you haven't already, you can go to Flutter.io and try it out. We have a lot of code labs. We have a lot of videos to really help you. Um, so these are basically the four ways, right? So Flutter is beautiful. Flutter is fast. Flutter is productive and open. So for beautiful. Um, Something that's really unique about Flutter is that we control every pixel on the screen. So whatever you build with Flutter, that is exactly what shows up on the final phone. And this allows you to have so much custom flexibility. What I mean by that is you can build any interface for any platform. So if I was really bored, I could build an iOS looking app on the Android phone and vice versa, right? Or a lot of things like that. But what we've seen is this is incredibly great for designers and developers to work together. As I mentioned earlier, you no longer have to throw something over a wall. You can you know, sit right next to each other and in real time paint whatever the designer is wanting to design on the app and then basically you're done. There's no other process to say. Um, something else that I want to point out here is let's look at some of the top apps today. I've seen you know, Spotify, uh, uh, other, other brands that just you can tell that they have custom uh, animations and custom design. And a trend we see now is Apps used to have iOS and Android looking apps. So let's take a random company like Nike, right? If they want to build an app, before it was, okay, let's build the iOS Nike app and let's build the Android Nike app. 
But for the brand, it should really be just the Nike app. It should be very custom branded, like their own navigation, their own experience. Because a brand is how you, as a client or as a consumer, can talk to your to your uh, to the people that use your service. So, um, if you look at the award-winning apps in the last three or four years, well, most of them have these, this custom branding. And yes, they have the critical platform differences on iOS and Android, but the app itself really looks like the brand's app. And that's something that we care a lot about with Fluff is. Yes, we have the material design and particular widgets, so you can still have those built and fields, but also you have the ability to make it very grand. The second one is fast. <laughs> so, as I mentioned uh, before, if you remember that diagram, why is Flutter neither of the two? Well, it is a single code base, but Flutter uses Dart, which it compiles ahead of time. What that means is that the code you use to Flutter uh, compiles directly down to native ARM code, native machine code. So there's no process, there's no bridge or context switch that happens in that process. What that means is the code that you're writing and that you see on the computer right now, which I'll show you in a bit, I put it on my phone and that's what will show up in the, in the final app. There's no kind of process um, which slows it down. That's kind of some of, some of the, the, uh, the things we're really excited about here is a brand new way of uh, doing this. Um, also, we've seen apps to be mostly 60 frames per second or higher. Um, this is actually an example uh, of two dimensions, which is an agency that built this demo for us. As you can see here, they're actually overlaying this high power graphic animation over some text. So you can see how much flexibility you have. If you download this demo, which is on our, our site, you can actually demo one and three. One of them is a game where you can kind of move things around. You can just get an idea of uh, the types of uh, flexibility that Flutter provides. The third is browser. So we did Flutter have something called Staple Hot Reload. And this is, you know, some of you are not in, but have already seen it. It's really fast. Um, hot reload allows you to make a change in the, in the code, and within two to three hundred milliseconds, see the change in the app. Um, this has really changed the game because, you know, for developers, you, there's all these gifs and things I see online where, you know, they're grabbing coffee or doing something, and they're like, no, 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 grab some time, right? It's okay. I'm still working, <laughs> right? But the problem with hot reload is you can no longer do that because by the time you press the hot reload button, it's already changed, but it really allows you to paint an app to life, right? And, you know, I was, again, this morning at some of the museums here, and you see these paintings, and obviously you're doing it at the time. Why can't apps be like that? Why can't you just write code and immediately see it and not have to deal with, oh, let's move that pixel to the left. Okay, let's wait three more minutes, right? Um, so you should definitely check out hot reload, as you can see here in the GIF. Um, what's happening is, um, we're changing things, so uh, let's see what goes here. So right now, you can also change the business logic of the app too. So you just change counter to minus, and now when you click it, it'll actually go, the number's going down. Um, and as you can see now, it says button tap three times. Um, so now they're gonna go ahead and click, change the word tap to click, right? They're gonna click the, that hot reload button, uh, 387 milliseconds, and immediately change, right? And I'll show you a few things um, of this in action. Finally, open. Something we're really proud of and happy with Flutter is that we're completely open source, and it's a very community-driven project. So Flutter started within Google, and it's funded, and, and uh, full-time Googlers like myself are working on it, but we have a lot of community contributions as well. Um, even this event, right, uh, when, I, when I was coming here, it, just these groups uh, here in Paris and all around the world are great because I love being able to receive some feedback and also, not just that, but contributions. So let's assume you're working on an app, and you need some really custom way to like integrate a certain API or you know scroll a certain way that is not on Flutter yet. You can basically build that package or plugin and then import it to Flutter directly and have other people use it as well. And we've seen that so much. We've seen a lot of people and companies too, like Alibaba. They, they were building an app, and a lot of the things that they needed for their app, um, you know, they started to, you know earlier on in Flutter, so they weren't there yet, and they actually added it a lot to the, the framework that other people and companies specifically in China or around the world can now use as well. Um, so very happy with that. Um, and then here is, a, and again, I don't want to dive too much into this because I know we'll get another presentation soon, but just a high level view of kind of technically how Flutter works. Um, as I mentioned, Flutter gives you full control over um, basically all of this. So you can go really deep in the Flutter, um, you know, from the kind of animations to the rendering to, to widgets and, and uh, not have to have that separate you know, XML layout template that you have to import. Basically, everything's in one place because everything's built on widgets. Who uses Flutter? So, as I mentioned, Flutter launched data at Mobile World Congress in February of this year. 
Um, and since then, we've just seen a crazy amount of companies from startups to enterprises to um, agencies adopting Flutter for several brands. Um, so I just wanted to list a few examples here. Um, so here's a video. Has anyone seen this video yet? Anyone? Let me see if it uh, works here. Hamilton is one of the most talked about and best loved musicals with shows on Broadway, in London, and around the country. We wanted something to make the show more accessible for our fans, so we wanted to develop an app to meet the needs of fans as we started to expand the brand. We turned to Posse, a New York-based development firm, to help us develop the Hamilton app. Hamilton's Flutter app launched in the App Store and the Play Store three months after we wrote our first line of code. And we accomplished a ton. Fans can enter a daily lottery for a shot at $10 tickets, buy merchandise through an e-commerce experience, take selfie photos with the ham cam, and get daily news and updates. We knew that this app needed to be rock solid, both in terms of performance and visual fidelity, and really represent the amazing experience that the Hamilton show itself provides. And ultimately, that's why we decided to use Flutter. Flutter is a mobile UI toolkit that allows developers and designers to craft beautiful native experiences on iOS and Android and is entirely free and open source. We have very high expectations of quality for the apps that we build. We expect pixel perfect results and we need them to be very high performance. Flutter gave us a lot of opportunities that previously weren't available to us. The fact that it's a single code base drastically improved our ability to deliver a consistent experience across platforms. It's hot reload gives us an ability to build more features in less time. It allowed me to make changes really fast and iterate through the UI without having to stop and restart the app. Coming from an iOS and Android background, it's something that I've been waiting for for a long time. The Flutter developer community is very active. Drop-in packages helped us maximize productivity. It helped us integrate elements like Firebase and Cloud. At the end of the day, we're just really happy that we found Flutter so that we can build these beautiful native interfaces for both iOS and Android from a single code base. We're given a really tight timeline and we turn the app around faster than I ever could have imagined. We were able to make changes right up to the night before we went live and really feel confident about them. In fact, we pushed an entirely new feature to the App Store the day before we launched. And since launch, Flutter's efficiency and speed has helped us to build new features such as the recent trivia game. We're really excited because as the show continues to grow, we're gonna be able to keep pace with a ton of new features that's gonna make the app even better. We couldn't be more thrilled with Flutter. It has enabled us to use one code base to deliver a truly high quality app that Hamilton fans have absolutely fallen in love with. We're thrilled with what Posse was able to deliver. The entire brand of Hamilton is about delivering on an experience for fans. They're thrilled about the new features that we're rolling out and we're really excited to see where the app goes next. Hamilton, uh, very popular Broadway musical in the US and also in London and around the world. Um, this video is brought to you by the <laughs> <laughs> So you have a deliver and like or not put away. All right. Good job. Okay, so uh, <laughs> Hamilton, um, very popular Broadway show, uh, and they wanted to build an app. Um, and they only had three months to do it. Um, this was back when Flutter was in Alpha, which was a, a year, a little over a year ago. Um, and it was really interesting because they really took a huge bet on Flutter. Their whole thing was, oh, you know, our brand, you know, Hamilton himself was very young, scrappy, and hungry, and he would take these bets, so we're just going to do this. But like, okay, you know, we're still very, very early. Um, and it was honestly pretty, pretty great to see the results they achieved. So not only were they able to launch on both iOS and Android in under three months, but they were featured on both stores, the, the Google Play and the App Store. Um, they have over a million installs now, um, and over half a million monthly active users. And that's what has me very excited, because that shows that a lot of people are coming back to the app because they're having a good experience with it. So it's not just a big brand automatically gets a lot of downloads, but you can see some of their monthly and daily active user accounts. Um, and feel free to download the Hamilton app if you're on yourself. Uh, Great, great people I have in seeing it. But um, you know, again, some of these numbers might be outdated, but it's still very, very great for us. Um, we've gone a long way since then, um, both internally and externally at Google. So as I mentioned, Flutter started within Google, and one of the examples that we use, um, Google Ads itself also uses Dart as a language. Uh, so as you can see, you know, Google invests a lot in the Flutter future because there's you know, a very important business here, as you can imagine, uh, due to the um, and then that's Sri, our uh, SVP, um, kind of just talking about the native experience and how happy Google is with, with what we're doing with Flutter. We also have uh, Alibaba. Um, you just built a Flutter app uh, that currently has 
over 50 million uh, users. Um, I was working on this video with the team. Uh, we just announced release preview two at uh, Google Developer Days China, um, and we showed this as part of the keynote, and it was just a great example. Uh, but beyond Alibaba, um, I'll show you this is also just a brief video, so you can see Alibaba's experience on Flutter. I'm just going to throw out the subtitles. <laughs>阿里巴巴集团的使命是让天下没有难做的生意。目前，闲鱼超两亿用户中已有五千万用户使用 Flutter。闲鱼致力于打造无闲置社会，把全新的生活方式和理念带给年轻人。比如说，有一位铲屎官想出售宠物用品，希望能够快速发布抓人眼球的商品信息。当有用户有购买需求时，只需清除屏幕即可。我们常在思考。如何构建易于操作的应用？如何确保应用画面精美、加载迅速？如何让更多用户使用我们的应用？更重要的是，如何早日实现以上目标？因此，我们开始寻找解决方案，并了解到 Google 的 Flutter 高帧率流畅的 UI， 让我们马上对 Flutter 所创造的用户体验产生了浓厚的兴趣。但更重要的是。其带来的开发效率提升，效果非常惊人。每一位开发人员都知道，为了覆盖最大量的用户，需要同时为 iOS 和安卓开发应用。这意味着必须同时维护两个不同的代码库，这不可避免地拖慢了研发进度。然而 ，Flutter 让我们只需要使用单个代码库，这使得应用维护更加简单高效。如此说来 ，Flutter 似乎是一个很好的选择，所以我们决定试一试。我们选择增量的开发 Flutter 功能，并将其集成到已经存在的应用中。目前，商品详情页作为闲鱼最复杂、最重要、用户访问最为频繁的部分，已经通过 Flutter 单个代码库同时运行在安卓和 iOS 平台上。在过去的几个月里， Flutter 已经为我们提供了很多助力，它速度极快，因为它是一个纯原生应用程序，它丰富而富有表现力的 UI 组件，使得我们可以轻松创建优美的 UI， 而且它显著降低了我们实现新功能所需的工作量。现在我们能够高效地为多平台创建应用程序。商品发布页作为闲鱼 App 的一个重要部分，刚在本月完成了基于 Flutter 的发布，我们也非常期待。接下来，在阿里巴巴的闲鱼使用 Flutter 构建越来越多的功能。Place like China, or, you know, across the Gulf of Brazil,、um, it's just really great for them to be able to iterate、um, at this level.、Um, another example. So before I talk about it, within China,、um, a few other examples were Tencent,、uh, just built the Tencent Now app.、Uh, BD is now、uh, starting to talk about Flutter. There's other brands, so、uh, we're really excited to see it there, and、uh, interested to hear here in Paris specifically、uh, just how the market is、um, and just、uh, understand. The adoption there, but、um, a few quick other examples, and then we'll get the, the questions and answers.、Um, so, Hattree is an enterprise app, so they do more、um, backend services for brands like McDonald's, Stanford University,、um, Turing Lab, and、uh, they use Flutter.、Uh, and a really interesting use case for that was that they were already using Dart, which is the language that powers it. So they were able to recycle basically seventy percent of what they had in Dart to build their Flutter app. But what was really exciting is overnight they went from two developers to three developers. Different code bases to five developers in the same code base, so that made it incredibly fast. They three x the bandwidth that they had. That's what we're seeing with Flutter now. People are hiring、uh, developers that can are just good coders in general, and they they can usually onboard to Dart within two or three weeks because Dart is a language very similar to other object-oriented languages. So if,、um, once you understand some of the differences, it becomes pretty quick to learn it.、Um, so we've seen a lot of efficiencies in terms of just having that one code base for everything. <clears throat> Finally, I'll just list a few more examples. So, Reflectly is a meditation app. 
um, that was a feature of one of the top 10 meditation apps in the iOS store, and they have a very iOS looking feel. So if you want a good example of what's a Flutter app that looks a lot like an iOS with your demo, you should definitely check out the Leslie. Um, uh, Perch is a finance app in the US. Um, and finally, Abbey Road Studios actually just built a brand new uh, app for all their artists to use to record and share music um, called, called Topline with Flutter. So one more thing I want to point out is that we haven't covered. Obviously, Flutter is part of Google. Uh, so as part of that, Flutter also gets the benefits of being very integrated with a lot of other services, um, whether it's apps, Firebase, and Cloud. So you can use whatever backend services you want and different APIs, but it integrates really well. We've seen Hamilton, for example, use Firebase and Cloud as well as, uh, as Flutter. And uh, we have a good partnership with the Material Design team. So, all the material design too, if you look at Google I.O. this year, you'll see that one of the material designers on the keynote, they mentioned their uh, collaboration with Flutter. So we kind of make sure that we're on the forefront with that, as well as having a lot of dedicated uh, attention to iOS too. And then finally, I wanted to say that there are four ways you can get started with Flutter. A lot of people think, oh, you know, I have to wait until I have an app idea. But that's not true. So that is the first way. First way is to start an app from scratch. Now it's the perfect time to start living with Flutter. We are incredibly stable. Uh, we just launched release preview two, uh, and now as you can see, Flutter is even starting to be used by all sorts of companies, big and small. So if you do have, whether you or your company has a certain app that you want to build out or rebuild, uh, now would be perfect to just do it from Flutter and you'll automatically have both. The second way is to prototype a new idea. So I mentioned a lot of times you just want to prototype something or a quick app to be able to test it. Uh, you can use Flutter to do that very quickly. The third is to bring it to the other platform. So what I mean by that is you already have an Android app or you already have an iOS app. It's great. And this is actually what Android Studio did. They already had an iOS app and because they needed an Android app very quickly, they just used Flutter for that app and it worked out very well for them. Uh, and finally, you use Flutter for part of your app. And this is very exciting. It's what Alibaba and others have done as well. And it's something that our team is very, very focused on uh, improving, which is a lot of, most people already have some sort of an app. Um, we're making it a lot easier for you to actually incorporate Flutter code and Flutter into your existing apps. So if you want to rebuild certain screens on the app or you want to add new elements to the app, you can do that with Flutter. Finally, shameless plug, is we have an event coming up December 4th in London. Um, and I actually just got pinged the notification while I'm doing this presentation that uh, it's officially the signups to actually attend in person uh, are officially announced. So uh, it will be December 4th. Um, most people will be able, everyone will be able to tune in online. Uh, we actually are also going to have uh, viewing parties uh, around the world. And I need to talk to you back there. We should definitely have a big one here in, uh, here in Paris. So uh, people can get together and watch this. Uh, but basically, this will be a very exciting event. We're going to have a lot of updates. We're going to have um, kind of lay out a roadmap for next year for Flutter. And so you should definitely save the data if you go to uh, this event site, which I'm um, happy to send after this as well. You can look up Flutter Lives. You can find information and also add it to your calendar so you have all the live stream information there. Great. Merci. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, and, uh, and so I'm sure you can ask somebody, but um, basically, all the platform differences, uh, as I mentioned, I actually had a gift that I didn't show, but uh, the team basically builds in all these platform dependencies, so whether it's scrolling, navigation, horizontal views that are different on iOS and Android, um, and incorporates that to Flutter, so you don't have to specify um, on iOS do this behavior, on Android do this behavior. Um, it's already built in. Uh, you can go into that layer if you wanted to actually say, hey, you know, I wanted to have this specific behavior on each platform, but a lot of things like navigation, scrolling, so for on iOS you get the bounce, um, Android, you get the grayscale, that stuff is already built in naturally. Um, there's actually a funny story for that. So the Flutter team uh, needed to figure out how do we make sure that the scrolling for iOS is exactly the, the same as, as an iOS app. So we took a high power camera and, uh, and recorded uh, in incredibly slow motion a, uh, a scrolling of an app 
and then we kind of you know got an algorithm, popped it in, a, in an equation, and, uh, and out popped a polynomial, and it basically uh, replicated the exact behavior of, of scrolling to the point where we saw flutter apps just scrolling like so smoothly. Um, sometimes it was even you know less laggy than, than certain uh, other apps on iOS. So um, the team is very meticulous on these platform dependencies because it's one of those situations where if it's right, no one notices, but if it's wrong, everyone notices. Right? So, uh, so most people like, assume certain behavior on iOS, but I promise you if I start messing with that and the other iOS app will start saying, wait, 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 and what's going on with scrolling and what's going on with this, this navigation, right? Um, another fun experiment we did is we built an app that's perfectly looks like an iOS app for that Android phone and perfectly looks like an Android. And in fact, you could uh, you download our Flutter Gallery app. You can actually toggle on any device on Android, you can toggle between iOS and Android. Version, so you can see both versions running regardless of the phone. Uh, but to answer your question is yes, um, the team cares a lot about these nuances, um, so most of them are already in Flutter. Yeah, totally. Um, so we have about, hard to say, but um, the team has more than doubled since I joined. Uh, I believe we have probably around 100. Uh, full time people working on Flutter, uh, and that's just uh, you know, mix of engineers, product and everything else. But then beyond that, we probably have thousands, right? Because we have the open source community, so we have contributions from everywhere. But within Google, um, yeah, we have a lot of resources now because it's very high priority for us. Good question. Um, so as you know, Flutter right now, the main focus uh, is just these 2D uh, you know, performance apps by on Android. So the team is very focused on uh, you know, shipping other priorities. Um, so when it comes to kind of 3D or VR or AR, we definitely know that the trend is mobile. I talk, started to talk with the trend, so I used to work on VR and YouTube. So I'm, I'm very, I understand a lot of uh, these things are priorities, and the team has that in mind. Um, at this moment, there definitely are some limitations. It's not the number one reason you should jump to Flutter is because you want to build this incredible AR VR app. Uh, but I know that actually people have built some really cool things, whether it's animation or, or, or some of that already, without the knowledge of our team. So a lot of times we'll see on Twitter, someone just built something really cool on, on uh, Flutter, and they'll be like, where's that come from, right? Because, because we're open source, you're able to do that. So I would definitely. Uh, Encourage you to look that up and definitely let me know or keep me up to it. I would love to understand. Uh, but, but yes, uh, we know it's important. And um, Peter mentioned built some of those really cool. You can do a lot with Flutter, but there are definitely some limitations there. Right? Yeah, um, so uh, right now, no. But Dart, the language, it, it is a web language as well, so there's Angular Dart. But that does not mean that in the short term uh, it won't be. Um, it's probably known that Fuchsia is an operating system that Google is building, and they have used Flutter as well. Um, and Fuchsia is going to go beyond mobile. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah. thank you all for your time. Appreciate it.